Hello and welcome back to the advanced course on our programming. Today we will talk about a very interesting topic. We will be looking at adding our own functions into the apply family of functions. So kind of nesting our own functions within the apply family of functions. And as you can imagine, from the apply family of functions are very powerful. Well, nesting our own functions within apply functions is incredibly, incredibly powerful. One of the most powerful techniques that exists in R. So let's get started. Let's see what this is all about. All right, so here we've got L apply, and we're applying it to the weather list, right? So what uh, can we say here? For instance, we've looked at row means, right? Row means. When we do that, we take every component of the weather list, which is indeed a matrix. And then we apply the row means function to that matrix. And the output is a list with those results. So if I run this, and I have a look here, you'll see that We've created a list with four components, Chicago, New York, Houston, and San Francisco. And every one of these components is a named vector with the averages of the rows of the associated matrix that was in the original list, which was weather. And now we've already seen this. Well, what is row means? Row means is a predefined function in R. What we can do is we can replace this function with our own. Nobody said we can't just put in our own function in there. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we'll start with an easy one. We'll say L apply weather. And here we're going to create our own function. How do we create functions? So this is something we discussed in the basic course on R and or R programming A to Z. To create your own function, you just type in the word function. Then you need to say how many arguments it'll have. And with the apply family of functions, you always need this one argument because that is what the apply or the L apply function will be iterating over. So weather has components. So this is a individual component that L apply will be extracting from weather and analyzing separately, right? So and we'll see that in action just now. Now you can do whatever you like with this component. So this right after you say function, whatever comes between this closing bracket for this component and this closing bracket for the L apply function. So anything that you type in here basically is the body of your function. I know it's not as structured as you'd expect like C or other languages, but that's pretty much it. That's how you will find that most of the users of R will type up their code. So it's something that is worth getting used to. So there we go. We're going to say X and we're going to say one comma nothing. What will this give us? This is basically, this is our function. And we're saying, so now for every component of weather, which is a matrix, we want this to happen. So basically we want to use this function. And the function, what it does is it takes a component, which can be Chicago, New York, Houston, or San Francisco. And then it will apply the square brackets with one comma nothing to it. So what it will do, it will give us the first row of every one of these matrices and then they will be put into a list and sent off as the result of this line. We run that exactly what we were expecting, right? So there is our very first row of every one of these matrices. All right, so let's try something else. Let's say fifth row because that's uh, hours of sunshine. Everybody loves sunshine. So let's put in five here. What does that give us? That gives us the fifth row of every one of those matrices and they have been put into a separate list. Okay, and um, what else can we do? We can do something similar and we can say, let's look at December for every single one of these matrices. So those are the metrics for December because December is the 12th month. We're looking at all of the rows. We have nothing here, comma 12, so the 12th month. So there we go. That's December for Chicago, December for New York, December for Houston, and December for San Francisco. All right, so now let's do something a bit more complex. Let's say we want to take, or let's just type it up just for practice, L apply weather uh, function, and then X is our component. You don't have to name it X, you can name it Z. You, let's name it Z for a change. And here we want to say Z square brackets one comma nothing. So I'm just gonna actually bring up weather here so that we know what we're dealing with. So let's look at Chicago. We're going to take the average high temperature in Fahrenheit and we're going to subtract the average low temperature in Fahrenheit, right? So we're going to look at the difference. 
right? So we're going to say z1 comma nothing, which is the first row, minus the other z2 comma nothing. And if we run that, now you have the difference. So if I look at the top, for Chicago, it's 32 minus 18, which is 14. 36 minus 21, which makes it 15. So let's have a look here. 14 and 15. So that is the difference in degrees Fahrenheit between the average high temperature for that month and the average, so average high temperature across the years that we have had in the data set or that were participated in this analysis originally because we got the data set with these averages already. So basically the difference between the average temperature in January, the average high temperature in January and the average low temperature in January in degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so that is how we calculate the difference. Now what we want to do is we want to change this difference into a decimal, right? So we want to look at the relative change so that we can compare them. How do we do that? Well, in deliverable two, we were asked for is how much, by how much the temperature fluctuates each month from minimum to maximum, and we need to take the minimum temperature as the base. All right, so we're going to take Z1 minus Z2. We'll put it in brackets, and then we will divide by the base. Divide by the base, let's do that again. So brackets, divide by the base, close these brackets. And then we want to also obviously round because otherwise there'll be too many decimal points. Well, well let's run it like that for now. So you can see there's a lot of decimal points. So let's, for now, let's round it, round. We want to take this comma, two decimal points, and then we run that. There we go. So now we can see how the temperature fluctuates. So the difference between the minimum and the maximum temperature or the low and the high that was observed in that month, the low on average across many years. So you can see in Chicago, it fluctuates by 78% in January, right? So that is a huge difference. Whereas in other places, it looks like mostly it's 24%, 20% in some place in New York, so 20% isn't, generally speaking, that much when you compare it to something like 78%. But we also have to take into account that this is uh, Fahrenheit and it doesn't convert linearly to Celsius. So there's all these uh, little nuances that you have to keep in mind, but that's more of domain knowledge. The main thing here is that we have come up with this result that we have been looking for. So let's put a comment here saying that this is what we are kind of after. So this is deliverable to temperature fluctuations, but at the same time, we will improve it, right? It's not ideal because it's in a list and it's not very presentable right now. We do have the result, but we can make it better and we will see how to make it better in the upcoming tutorials. But basically that's how you create your own functions to work with components of a list and then use the apply functions to apply your functions to those components of a list. A very, very powerful technique. So definitely have a play around with that. See what other options or other things you might come up with in terms of working with these matrices that we have. So d just create a function of your own liking. For instance, you could try and divide one of the metrics by the other. So what do we have here? We have days with precipitation, we have average precipitation in inches. Maybe try dividing average precipitation in, in, in inches by the days with precipitation and uh, see if you can create a function which will be similar to this and then apply it across all components of weather and just check your results, see if you get a good result so that actually matches up to what uh, you were expecting to be calculated. All right, so this brings us to the end of today's tutorial and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, happy coding.